There is not much that will get me out of bed at this time on a Sunday morning, but the promise of a delicious breakfast is one of them. We're venturing into new territory today and it's in the name of waffles. So time for a shower, time for me to kind of click my brain into gear slightly because I'm doing this with, with my brain still very much in bed. <laughs> So let's try this again in a minute. How good are these pajamas? They're from Lucy and Yak and I absolutely love them. They're bright Barbie pink gingham, which is uh, very apt for a Barbie summer, I would say. They also match my glasses. Although, do you know what? I do love these glasses. They're from Ray-Ban um, and I've had them for quite a few years now and I really, really love them. They are a little pink pair. They've got like very thin pink rims to them. Um, but honestly, <laughs> I can barely see out of them anymore. Like my glasses are dirty at the best of times. I'm terrible for keeping my glasses clean. I just, I just don't realize that my whole world is fogged. But these are so damaged. They're so, so scratched. I've dropped them about a million and one times now and because they've got the thin rim around them when i do that that's actually mad it's like there's a blurred filter <laughs> across the world <laughs> i'm pretty sure it's supposed to be the other way around i bought these blow dry clips a couple of months ago now i needed them last time we went to a wedding and i was trying to like set my hair properly and I didn't have enough of the big clips that you need to like clip your curls up and keep them in for a couple of hours. Um, and I found these ones just like on Amazon. They were literally like a tenner. You don't get loads of them. I think I got a pack of 10 um, in these like little pastel colors, but they're really good. <laughs> so if anyone's in the market for like big clips to keep your hair just off your face <laughs> for one sweet precious moment, they're huge, massive, grippy things. And also they look like two little tiny sharks when you put them in your hair. I'm trying to be one of those people that's of the opinion that when you get something nice, like you treat yourself to something really special or you get gifted something really lovely for Christmas or a birthday or whatever, just use it. Like don't save it for a special day, just use it and enjoy it and love it and kind of, you know, incorporate that loveliness into your everyday routine. I'm really trying to be that person. <laughs> but I think it's like really deeply ingrained in me and my kind of makeup as a person. I think maybe it like, it comes from, like my nan used to save wrapping paper. Like she'd perfectly carefully open a gift and then fold up the wrapping paper and put it in a drawer. <laughs> so I think it's literally like in my genetics to just save things for another day. And this is one of the perfect examples of that because this body cream is so delicious and delightful. I can't even begin. As soon as you lift this out the drawer, the smell is so incredible. It's like a really fresh kind of citrusy, little bit of floral sugariness. Probably haven't sold that very well, but it smells like spring summer. So I will literally only let myself use this on my arms on special occasions when I'm going out with friends or whatever. Um, and I really should just let myself use it whenever. Maybe I'll, I'm gonna leave it out on my desk to try and encourage myself after this. There we go, that'll sink in in a minute. For now, I'll just look like an extra in the T-Birds. I look a little like my name would be Bruce and I'll, uh, I'll get you that spare bumper down at the pod shop, huh? <laughs> Not my best. Down at the pod shop, pot, pots, pots. The pot, sh the pot shop. <laughs> Welcome back. This is the one that I use every single day after a shower on my arms and my legs because I'm too lazy to do my whole body. Uh, this is the Aveeno Skin Relief Moisturizing Lotion. Helps heal very dry skin. I really like it specifically because I feel like it really packs a punch. My arms get super duper dry. They're covered in keratosis pilaris. I've never found anything that helps the appearance, but this really helps the kind of smoothness and the texture. They get so rough and dry, um, but this really makes a difference for how rough and bumpy it feels. Um, but the thing that I like about it is that it doesn't sit heavily on your skin. This is actually quite kind of thick and sticky and feels very luxurious. This has the same feeling, but sinks in really nicely. Um, I don't think it's scent, oh yeah, unscented um, and suitable for sensitive skin. So big recommend for this one too. Anyway, let's stop talking about moisturizer. How you doing? While I whack on some sun cream and I'm already running out of time, I knew that this was gonna happen as soon as I clicked on the vlogging camera because once I start, I just can't stop talking. <laughs> I am off to meet my friend Gemma for some breakfast. You know Gemma, she's been in a million and one videos over the years. We've been friends for a very long time. We met at university through blogging because how else did you meet people in 2011? <laughs> other than through having a fashion blog. And whenever I see Gemma, I always know that she's gonna have an interesting venue up her sleeve. She's like really on the ball when it comes to like cute little 
delicious spots like all the instagrammable ones that you really need to check out when you come to london she's so good for knowing cute little places like that for us to try downside of it though for my little introverted self who never wants to venture very far is um, that she makes me actually travel to new bits of london <laughs> that i can't be bothered to go to we are going to a place called utter waffle which is already a strong start if you ask me. I have eyed up the menu already, there's some chicken and waffles which look like they might be right up my street. I know Gemma's more of a sweet girl but I'm all about, I don't, I don't love a sweet breakfast. Shoot me, huh? Shoot me! I just don't love a sweet breakfast. I'm really annoyed with myself though, you know, I bought this new concealer, you can probably tell this probably looks terrible, um, and it's such a shame. I bought this new concealer because I, for years and years and years, have been using the NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer, but I was on a mission a couple of years ago to turn my makeup bag cruelty free, um, and I've done it with literally everything apart from concealer because I just can't find one that compares. Um, but I ran out of this the other day and was like, well, that's it, I'm not buying it again, so let's just find something else. So I picked up this Vive one because I've heard such good things about this brand, um, and it's really lovely concealer, like I like the formula is definitely great, but I've 100% bought the wrong colour. I'm annoyed though because I used the like shade comparison thing where you put in your other products and the colours that you use for other brands and then it'll tell you what colour to buy in the Vive products. And that's what I did and it matched me up with light five there'll probably be absolutely no difference on camera whatsoever i think you can tell though actually this is this is a lot paler so i think what i'm gonna have to do is admit defeat and buy it again because i really like it but i don't want to risk getting another wrong shade hopefully i might need it later down the line in the year after we've been on holiday maybe um i feel like that's wishful thinking because i just burn and then go pale again <laughs> instead what we'll do is on top of the orange concealer will slap on some ghostly white powder and surely that cancels each other out. I still look like I haven't slept for 87,000 years. And if you're wondering where the mustachioed one is this weekend, I, I, actually that doesn't really help does it? I could be talking about either Adam or Flo in that, in that description. The mustachioed one, the ginger mustachioed one, uh, he's on stag do this weekend. He's over in Lisbon. I played this game yesterday. I think this must be a new stag thing because my brother played it on a stag recently as well. It's probably not new at all. Um, it's this game. I feel, I feel like if you're not British, this is gonna make you just like roll your eyes and be like, that's the worst, most British thing I've ever heard. There seems to be this thing at the moment um, with this game called Oué la Poule. <laughs> If you're not fluent in French, oué le poulet uh, means where is the chicken? And the game involves dressing the stag up as a chicken, sending him off on his own or with like one other member of the party to a mystery drinking location in the vicinity. And then the rest of the stags have to like travel across the area going into every single pub and bar that they can find, drinking in every single one until they find the chicken. <laughs> Don't know about you, but I thought that was very funny. So that's what Adam is currently up to, but he is home today. But then he also has another plan to go to this evening. The social battery is something that I, I just truly can't relate to. Every golden retriever boyfriend with endless social battery needs a scruffy mutt rescue dog girlfriend of an unidentified breed. Um, who socialises over waffles with one friend and then has to come at home and decompress. <laughs> That's the key to a, a strong relationship dynamic, I think. Little hair. I really don't think I can be bothered to do anything other than brush. That's gonna have to do today, I'm afraid. The amount of grey hairs that are appearing in my parting these days. I'm gonna be a silver witch before you know it. Silver witch should 100% be the girl alternative to Silver Fox. Because I don't think there is one, obviously. We live in a patriarchy. Let's bring that in, Silver Witch. Um, it's a bit fluffy, but that's fine. So let's go for this one today. I'm quite enjoying this. It's like quite like a zesty, citrusy scent. I got this in Cheshire Oaks a while ago. Mm. This wall is getting to me at the moment. I need either like one piece of really lovely artwork or a couple of big pieces of artwork up there. This blank wall 
it's not floating my boat in fact you know what a lot of the decor in this house is not floating my boat at the moment maybe we'll have a chat about that later I was going to take my Uniqlo bag but I'm reading a bit of a chunky one at the moment and I feel like it's going to be quite annoying in that little bag. I'm currently reading this which is a bit different for me. This is by Leanne Moriarty, Apples Never Fall. Adam's mum lent me this, she said it was really good. So this is a little book club mystery type fiction um, and I'm really enjoying it, it's very compelling. So let's get the cat in because she's out and about doing her thing and then let's go find some waffles. And in the morning I'm making waffles. to the various charity shops along the way because I just can't resist, I'm literally powerless. Um, but nothing caught my eye, that was a bit of a shame. I was really in the mood to buy a new book and um, there was nothing apart from the one thing that I always check, which is any paperback versions of the very, very first Harry Potter cover art. Um, because you just never know, it could be a first edition that someone's let slip through their hands. Anyway, here is the thrilling, no less, thrilling set of treats that I picked up. Uh, this is what I actually popped in for, which is toothpaste because I had to squeeze like the very last possible amount out this morning. We got laundry stuff because I also hit the end of this yesterday and the washing basket is piling up. I grabbed myself some lunch for tomorrow. Tomorrow is Monday and I like to just like stay home and get stuff done on a Monday rather than heading out to the shop. So I've got my lunch sorted for tomorrow. Picked up a stir fry bag and some stir fry sauce. Literally the laziest, easiest lunch. Nectarines because I really wanted some fruit. I've got berries for my breakfast in the Oh, that's the other thing. Ah, oh, I meant to get some like granola fruit and fiber stuff. I've literally got like the dust left in the bag. Oh, that's so annoying. I knew I was forgetting something. Oh, I also did get, um, I, sh I filmed a, little, a couple of little clips from the really, really lovely um, like baked goods stalls that they had at the local market. This is probably not looking quite as cute as it did when I picked it up <laughs> because this is a cupcake. Uh, it's been in my bag for, oh dear. <laughs> it's a mush. I mean, it's a delicious mush. When it comes to like a baked goods selection of like brownies, cheesecakes, it honestly doesn't get much more basic than my choices because as soon as I see like a perfect little vanilla cake with like vanilla icing and sprinkles on it, that's that's all I, that's all I can see. It's tunnel vision. This isn't as bad as I was expecting, but I do feel like this is a representation of um, moving from your twenties into your early thirties. <laughs> this is how I feel on a daily basis. And now I'm trying to decide what my useful job of the day is going to be because hello, Flo. Sorry, I didn't come and say hi. Have you had a very nice nap? Doesn't look like that's ending anytime soon. So yeah, I wanna make sure I do at least one vaguely what I could consider like a useful thing, like a job off the list type thing today. To be fair, I did quite a lot yesterday. I did quite a lot of housework yesterday, um, but there's quite a few bits that are just like niggling at me around the house. My compromise is I'm gonna change the bed. I'm gonna get that done anyway because I just want a nice fresh bed to get into tonight. Have a nice bath and then get into a nice fresh bed. And I'm also gonna put this washing away because that's bugging me too. Do you know who's not gonna be very happy about me changing the bed though? This cat. <laughs> I'm gonna have to move you, which is frankly terrible news. Attempting an efficient cat transfer. How's that? See, you didn't even have to move. <laughs> I've just smashed that last hour. What a great feeling. 
and now I can binge watch The Summer I Turned Pretty all evening uh, without feeling remotely guilty. Right, let's go and get this in the wash. Right, I have just chucked a little bag together. I knew as soon as I turned this camera on that the cat was going to appear. That's great, thank you so much. <laughs> Are you planning on sitting there the whole time? It's giving Jurassic Park, actually. <laughs> I have just had a text from Adam to say that he's on his way. So I've just chucked a bag together to take out with me. Changed into my dungarees. I've got my sunnies ready to go. And I've got a little park trip bag of tricks, basically. I've got my lovely knitted woolen picnic blanket. I've also got some sun cream because ginger boyfriend problems. And the other thing that you might have spotted in my bag of tricks here is a couple of games, which I'm really excited to have a chat with you about today because this video has very kindly been sponsored by Big Potato Games, which is so cool. I'm so excited about this. I'm sure you probably have, but if you haven't heard of Big Potato, they are an independent games company. They are so fun and bright and colorful. And if you haven't heard of them specifically, I bet you will have heard of some of the most iconic games, Obama Llama anyone maybe herd mentality um which is something that no joke i think i have taken with me to every party gathering dinner uh girls weekend away holiday that we've been on for the past like three years and before i start having a chat about this i feel like there'll be a couple of you out there that are like oh no my brain turns to belly button fluff when anyone tries to explain new games to me I'm right there with you, but one of my favorite things about Big Potato Games is that they are all so easy to learn. They actually have YouTube videos for every single game to like teach you how to play it in a really quick way. There's nothing complicated about any of them. They're all just really clever, quick little games that are so much fun to play. And I just think that these ones I'm gonna quickly show you now um, and a couple of others as well. They are so perfect for if you're doing any kind of on the go traveling this summer maybe, or if you've got any particularly cute little gatherings planned. When the weather's good and you're being out and about, if you are heading off on holiday, these would be such a great like poolside addition to your beach bag and if you like the look of any of these if you want to give them a try for yourself the great news is that i do have a code for big potato i have a 15 percent off code the code is lucywood15 that will get you 15 percent off your order on the big potato website so you can nab any of these that you like the look of and take them off on your travels this summer but that code does actually last all the way through to december so if you need any good little gift ideas for friends or family check out big potato let's do p for pizza first we actually got this uh, a couple of years ago when we went glamping for Adam's birthday, I thought this would be really fun to take with us for that kind of like cozy couples weekend. And now literally whenever we go for a trip anywhere, I've also taken this away with friends, but whenever we go away for a weekend, we always just chuck this in our suitcase because it's such a good little time waster. So quick to play, there's no complicated instructions and it's really fun. So this one is a word game. I am absolutely garbage at it because I get far too stressed and panicky and Adam literally <laughs> always wins. But you have these little triangle cards that look like this and you basically have to match the letters to the category. You shout out your answer as quick as you can and then the winner is the first person to get nine of these little triangles that build up your own pizza slice. It starts off easier, it gets harder as you go along um, and it descends into chaos every single time. We end up just shouting random words at each other. <laughs> Technically no real pizza involved with this but I think the next time that you're heading out on a little summer's evening and you get a takeaway pizza to go and sit outside with, that would be the ultimate vibes to pair this with. I haven't actually been asked to talk about this, um, but I wanted to make sure I did. I'm chucking this in myself because we've had this for ages. We love this game and we play it all the time. This comes everywhere with us. This is OK Play. You might have seen it on my Instagram stories before. First of all, I love it because it clips onto your bag and it also has the rules attached to it, which I just think is verging on genius. But this is like a five in a row little tile placing game while the other people who are playing with you, this one's two to four players, is the other people are trying to block you from getting five in a row. And in a nutshell, I genuinely believe that every beer garden in the UK should just provide this as standard because it is the perfect little game to while away the hours while you're having a nice little shandy in the sunshine. We basically always whack this out if we ever go for a drink together on like a summer's day or a summer's evening. We play it about a million times in a row. It gets extremely competitive and it's a firm favorite. It's just so handy. And not coming with me today because this is for more players. This is for like four to eight players. So maybe if you've got like a summer barbecue coming up or a summer garden party, something where you just kind of want to get everyone together and get everyone really relaxed and break the ice a little bit, this one is perfect. It's 
it's so much fun. This is Sounds Fishy. And how do I describe this one? So Sounds Fishy is like one of your classic, think on your feet, fast thinking, push your luck a little bit, um, really kind of back yourself bluffing. Everyone has to make up an answer to a slightly stupid question. And one of the players has to spot the fake answers. So there's one truth in amongst all the red herrings. So all three of these are perfect for going out and about this summer, particularly if you're going traveling or if you're just socializing out and about a lot, any of these would be such a great addition to your park bag, poolside bag, beach bag. So I will make sure to link all of those down in the description box below because that was a bit of a whirlwind explanation of them all. But if any of them did catch your eye, don't forget to head over to Big Potato so you can check them out properly. And don't forget my code as well, LucyWood15, which will get you 15% off your order. I'm literally gonna chuck Pizza Pizza and OK Play both in my bag right now. And while the sun is still shining, let's go and make the most of this amazing weather. You drove me in the kitchen. I just have to tell you though first, I invested in a new little like mini tripod the other day and having something that I can just attach my camera to and not have to find a combination of objects around my house to balance the camera on <laughs> before I can start filming. Turns out that's an absolute game changer. Had a lovely afternoon, really nice couple of hours and Adam's rolled off to the next thing that he's got to go to tonight but I'm gonna have some dinner. I think I'm just gonna do some pasta, like really quick, figure out what's in the fridge. Got some mushrooms, some courgette, some bacon. I feel like that's a combination I can work with. A little bit of creme fraiche, a little bit of cheese. Jobs are good. I still very much can't cook, but I do occasionally pick up like handy tips from him while I'm watching him do the cooking. Um, when you're like peeling and chopping stuff, having a little bowl next to you to put the like peelings and choppings in, rather than just letting them build up around you is a little game changer. I don't know where he got that top tip from, but it, it's genuinely very like helpful and calming when you're cooking. So I think I mentioned earlier when I was upstairs um, and I mentioned like we've got that blank wall that needs something for it. And uh, I just feel like the, the bedroom decor is not exactly hitting the spot for me anymore. And I've got a couple of like little bits and bobs around the house that I feel like it's time for like a little bit of a refresh. It just feels a little bit mismatched and disjointed at the moment. So I'd quite like it to feel a little bit more cohesive, but I'm gonna have a think about that. I very much learned <laughs> along the way not to rush into these things anymore. So I'm gonna start kind of like putting a bit of a Pinterest board together, but there are two, I wouldn't say they're big projects, but like two things that I put off cause I was like, oh, it's not worth putting money into that. But now I'm like, maybe I would quite like to do that. And one of them, I would attempt to do myself anyway, and I don't think it's a huge thing. I'll start here because the first thing that I'm thinking about is, because I put so much work into these stairs, still looking cute, I'm wondering whether maybe a little bit of panelling might be quite a nice addition either side. But this is what I kind of wanted to ask you. I'll pop some pictures in here, a little bit of shape and detail, and a little bit of dimension, because these walls are so tall and empty. But I wanted to ask you, like, is panelling still nice? I don't know whether panelling is one of those things that like has been done to death and this time next year is not gonna be nice anymore. I personally feel like it's quite timeless and I don't think that is the case. And that's the one that I would probably, I'll give it a go. I'll take a whack at it. The other thing though is much bigger and probably more of an investment. Um, and I, I mentioned it to Adam the other day and he was like, why do you think of these things? <laughs> Look. I've got a very busy brain. I'm wondering whether we'd like to get some cabinets and shelves built in to kind of span this. <laughs> do, do you know what I mean? I'm wondering about maybe getting a carpenter to do kind of like an inbuilt thing, maybe some archway action along the top. I think it would probably mirror on this side into this space around here. But then I think we'd probably lose this little vinyl corner that we've got going on back here. But then, I mean, it looks gorgeous but it would be really nice to have some like full built in. And I think it would just like upgrade the room slightly. But now that I've thought about it, I don't know if anyone else is like this. As soon as you get an idea in your head, it's like, well, I really want to do that now. I think that would actually look really nice if we kind of did it in like a, quite like a, a dark kind of duck egg kind of color maybe, or like, I don't know. And I think with like nice carpentry archways along the top, it would just look really lovely but <laughs> the price might not be so lovely. So I would also like to know your opinion about that as well. Cause obviously it's not a huge room and I don't know whether something like that would also just be maybe like too overwhelming for the space. Cause we've kind of come to this realization that we're probably gonna be here a little bit longer than we maybe 
thought that we would be, be just because of how everything is at the moment. Um, maybe it would be worth, you know, doing a couple more projects to to sharpen things up a little um, and just like a little bit of a freshen up, you know. So let me know what you think about those ideas. I'll probably end up doing both because I latch onto an idea and then it just doesn't leave my head until it's done. So if it was up to me, we'd be getting it done spontaneously tomorrow. Washer is on slightly unexplainable history program on channel four and I'm set with my book I'm up to well I haven't read very much I was gonna say up to chapter eight which sounds like loads but that's literally <laughs> this much I'm going through a bit of a thing at the moment where I'm enjoying like a lighter read not necessarily in terms of like subject matter because I suspect this is probably gonna be a pretty dark story but like an easier read that I can pick up and put down a lot more freely. So that's my current read. I've literally just finished yesterday. Um, where is it? Look at this bookshelf. The rainbow is officially overflowing, but I am trying to keep the rainbow in categories. I've got a whole bunch as well upstairs. See, this is another reason some storage over this side is really appealing right now. Think of the book space that I would have. This is Things We Never Got Over by Lucy Score. The latest version of me getting sucked into TikTok, basically. This kept popping up on um, like stacks that people were doing of like must read TikTok famous book talk books. So this is your classic small town romance, sunshine meets grumpy. When I first started reading this, I was like, oh no, TikTok has done me dirty once again. But I reckon, a third of the way in, I had a sudden realisation that I was all in for this story and I don't really know how it happened. I think the characters are really lovable. It's a surprisingly like addictive, compelling story to go along with the small town romance. And obviously, as always in these books, the relationship is like verging on quite toxic and you have to really like suspend all of your sensible thoughts. But for some reason, this one really got me. Sometimes they get you, sometimes they don't. This one really got me. Also, you can't tell me that this is not Sons of Anarchy fan fiction. And look, I saved, I'm so, I'm so pleased with myself. I saved half my cupcake. So I'm gonna eat this, I'm gonna watch Love Island and I'm gonna be living my best life, to be quite honest. So thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I've really enjoyed it actually. It's been really nice to chat to you while I've been by myself today. It always feels like a little bit of companionship when I can pick up the camera and chat to you. So I really appreciate you hanging out with me. Thanks so much. And don't forget about my code for Big Potato Games as well. If you're going anywhere on holiday this summer, if you're staying in the UK, if you're going abroad, if you're gonna be poolside, if you're gonna be glamping, or if you're just gonna get the barbecue out and have a great time at home, any of those games would be a perfect, easy, fun addition to a little bit of sunshine. And there's so many others over on Big Potato as well for you to check out. I'll leave the link in the description box down below, as well as my code for your 15% off discount. And that is all. So I will see you very soon with another video. Bye.